CataractCoach.com. Are you having trouble learning Faco Chop? Try this easier technique first. A lot of surgeons have emailed me and said they're having a lot of trouble learning Faco Chop. And it's a challenge. I think the biggest challenge in Faco Chop is there's a finite window of time in which you must accomplish the chop. With divide and conquer, you make your grooves. You can wait as long as you want before splitting those grooves and cracking the nucleus into pieces. But with FACO chop, when we're chopping in the capsule bag, we have to buzz in with a FACO probe and within the next second or two, we have to accomplish the chop. And that's because we're using the FACO probe to hold the nucleus with high vacuum. And if we let that vacuum drop, we lose that holding power. So there's another alternative technique, which I'm gonna show you in this case. This is an unedited case from start to finish. It's only gonna take four and a half minutes or so, so it's not a long case. But it's an unedited case to show you all the steps, doing a nice capsular rexus here. Now key here in this case, let's have a five or five and a half millimeter capsular rexus. Cannot have a baby sized capsular rexus in this case. That looks beautiful. We're gonna do flip and chop. We're gonna get the nucleus out of the capsular bag. So here's our hydrodissection, good fluid waves going across. There's the nucleus coming up. And now we've got a good lift of the nucleus. Put some more viscous to protect the corneal endothelium. The phaco probe is gonna go in. So our same chop settings, high vacuum, high flow. The chopper now goes behind the nucleus. So you don't have to worry about working in the capsular bag. Now we can just bring the instruments together and apart, and just like that, you've got two halves. Each half can then just be emulsified. At this point, after that single chop, there's no more chopping. All you're doing is using the instruments to keep the material in front of the phaco probe and then emulsifying it nice and easy. There's most of the end nucleus is out. There's an epinuclear shell, which will be vacuumed as well. And this case becomes highly efficient. There you go, the entire nucleus is removed. In this case, in just about two minutes from the start. That's very efficient. Of course, it's not about speed, it's about efficiency. Here comes the IA probe, will clean up. So if you're trying to do FACO chop in the caps or bag and you're having a tougher time with it, try doing this technique, flip and chop. So getting the nucleus out of the caps or bag, it buys you the freedom of time. Then you just put the FACO probe in front of the nucleus, the chopper goes around the part that's flipped out of the capsule bag. The two instruments are then brought together and apart, and you have a complete separation. You have the two halves. It works well on cataracts that have a nuclear density of probably about two to three plus nuclear sclerosis. If it's very dense, it may not be as good. And certainly if the lens is very soft, this may not be ideal. It's hard to sometimes get a chop in any lens that's very soft. So there's the capsule bag fully inflated. Here comes the IOL. Let me just show you the rest of the case for completeness sake. So the lens is gonna unfold in the capsule bag using the chopper here to dial it into position. This looks great. You can also be very efficient with this FACO flip technique, this flip and chop. It's very efficient. It uses a bare minimum amount of FACO energy, very minimal amount of fluid goes through the eye. It's surprisingly gentle to the corneal endothelium. We're actually not applying much energy in that area. You see, we go bevel down with the FACO probe when we did that. So here's the IOL, looks good. Let's clean up that undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. Do a little capsular polishing here, get that pretty clean. That looks great. And so we'll finish up the case. And I'll just, for completeness, show you the end of the case as well. By the way, I like the draping on this case. It looks good, all the lashes out of the way. Here's the sealing of the incision back and forth, just in the mid stroma there, just enough to get the incision sealed. Don't do those two big white dots on the side that people do when they're first learning how to seal incisions. Centering up the lens, there is a nice overlap of the optic by that rexus. And then we check everything. Let's see what the incision looks like, a little bit of tetracaine on a sponge, and check with a dry sponge. Pow, it looks great. I encourage you to check out cataractcoach.com. That's the teaching website. There's a lot more material on cataractcoach.com than compared to here on YouTube. We have articles, we have figures, we have a nice organized way of looking at all the videos and searching for them as well. And please sign up for a free email list. We'll send you a brand new case every morning right to your inbox. Thanks for watching.